Lee Gates is a stock news anchor on a well-known American TV show called Money Monster. One day, he brought the news about a big company called Ibis whose stock price dropped drastically a few days ago. The loss of the company's shares even reached $800 million and became a trending topic on all American TV stations. The owner of Ibis named Walt announced that the stock price decline was just a mistake by the company's system. Walt asked all the investors not to panic because now they were trying to fix the error. Hearing Walt's explanation, Lee the presenter then helped to convince the audience that what Walt just said was true. Judging from the track record of the company's stock which has always gone up for the last 16 years, Lee was sure that the current condition was only temporary. It would be back to its stable state in no time. During the break, the director named Patty said that the next session was supposed to be an exclusive session where Lee would interview Walt in person. But until now, Walt still hasn't arrived and can't be contacted. Diane, Walt's spokesperson said that she would replace Walt until he arrived there to answer all the questions. The program resumed after the break. Meanwhile, on the outside, a mysterious man can be seen carrying a package into the studio where the Money Monster program was taking place. The man secretly watched Lee from behind but when Lee realized his appearance, suddenly the man took a gun from his back and shot it in the middle of live TV. Don't move. Oh Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Me. Turn the cameras on or I'm gonna shoot him in his head! What do you want me to do? Put it up. Are we live? Yeah. yeah. The man with the gun was Kyle Budwell. He told Lee to open the package. When Lee opened it, he was shocked because the package turned out to be a bomb attached to a vest. Kyle then forced Lee to wear the vest while threatening to shoot him in the head. While Kyle was off guard, Patty hurriedly ordered the crew in the room to get out and call the police. She also tried to calm Lee down and asked him to remain cooperative until the police arrived. Kyle said the reason he did all this was that he felt Lee and the Ibis company had tricked him. On the Money Monster broadcast a few days ago, Lee convinced the audience that the stock price of the company would go up, but in fact, it drastically dropped down. In the end, Kyle who invested there lost $60,000. Even though Lee tried to explain that it was all just a system error from the company, Kyle still didn't believe him. Kyle believed that Ibis had taken away more investors' money. Lee then offered a deal where he will repay all the money Kyle had invested in Ibis and promise not to call the police as long as Kyle stopped his lunacy. Kyle refused the offer. He just wanted to directly talk with Walt, the owner of Ibis. For Lee or everyone there, $60,000 may be a just small amount but for people like Kyle and the low middle class investors out there who are also scammed, that amount might be everything they had. In the waiting room, Diane watched the hostage broadcast. She then immediately returned to the IBIS office to find out where her boss is. Not long after, the police came and immediately evacuated everyone in the studio. He's as sick about this as anybody else. When one of the policemen tried to negotiate over the phone, Kyle got angry and threatened to shoot Lee in the head if the police continued what they were doing. Hearing that, Patty immediately cut off the telephone. On the other hand, news about Lee's hostage-taking had spread all over America, and even media around the world also broadcasted it. When Diane arrived in her office, she asked one of her colleagues to find out where Walt was. She began to feel suspicious about if it was true that the decline in Ibis's stock price was just because of an error in the algorithm system, why would Walt run away and refuse to meet the investors? In the TV studio, Patty's TV crew reported that Diane was nowhere to be found in the waiting room. She tried to contact the Ibis office many times but got no answers at all. She was so upset she told his assistant named Ron to go to the Ibis office to broadcast a live interview with the company. When he got there, Ron immediately started the broadcast. Diane watched the broadcast from her office and thought if she refused to meet the media, then the company's image would get even worse. Finally, Diane decided to meet Ron outside. She said she was willing to be interviewed by Lee and Kyle as the company representatives. When the broadcast was connected to the studio, Lee then asked Diane to call the programmer who designed the company's algorithm system. But unfortunately, she explained that the programmer was not a Native American. Kyle got mad hearing her response and shot the monitor in front of him while threatening to kill Lee if she couldn't find any solution to the problem within 10 minutes. Everyone in the studio panicked. They tried with all their might to help to find Walt's whereabouts. Amid the panic, Patty got an idea that required Lee to be able to convince and persuade tens of millions of the audiences to invest in the Ibis company stock market, so the stock price would definitely go up again and the money that Kyle invested would definitely be returned to him. Hearing the idea, Lee dared to try it. Ibis stock because it'll save my life. Every single one of you buys a few shares. A little bit of money, the price starts to go up. Then the sky's the limit. Unfortunately, the idea failed. 
Even though Lee had pleaded to the public that their investment would save his life, Ibis's stock price didn't blow up but instead got even lower than before. Lee was really disappointed, despite his fame as a TV presenter, nobody really cared about him. Not long after, Diane got the news about Walt's whereabouts. He had returned to America. Diane then rushed to pick him up at the airport. While waiting for him, Diane called the company programmer and asked for an explanation about what caused the error in the IBIS algorithm system. But strangely, the programmer explained that this was not caused by a system error. He suspected that the decline in IBIS's stock must have been due to someone manipulating the data. When Walt arrived, he told Diane to escort him to hide in the federal building until things were settled. It seemed that Walt had got the idea of what was happening all this time. Diane then checked Walt's passport and based on the last written record, he had gone to Africa. Diane passed this information to Patty and informed her that Walt was currently hiding in the federal building. Outside the TV studio, police officers were seen analyzing the bomb in Lee's vest. From their analysis, the only way to detonate the bomb without making it explode is to shoot the bomb trigger located beside the vest. After a long discussion, the police decided to shoot the trigger even though it would endanger Lee with a gunshot wound. The sniper team will sneak into the studio while Kyle was off guard to avoid alerting him. The sniper then would shot Lee's bomb vest while the other police officers prepared to capture Kyle. Only then, the medical team would rush to treat Lee's gunshot wound. After finishing observing the building's blueprint to find the best entryway to access it, the gun squad started an ambush. You're the last man to camera. In the studio, Patty asked her crew to find out about Walt's activities during his visit to Africa. She also passed the information from Diane earlier to Lee. Suddenly, Patty got a call from one of her crew who told her that the police were planning to shoot Lee to detonate the bomb by destroying the trigger. Patty had a dilemma thinking if the police missed the shot, then instead of being killed by Kyle, Lee could be killed by being shot by the police. To save his colleague's life, Patty ordered Lee to get out of the studio to find Walt in the federal building requiring him to pass through the crowd so that the police wouldn't be able to shoot him freely. Lee managed to dodge the shot. He then told Kyle about Walt's whereabouts and asked him to cooperate because he had no other choice. Both of them then got out of the building and went to the federal building. They were always watched by the police along the way. Even though the police had tried to secure the road, people still deliberately approached the two of them. While walking to the federal building, Kyle suddenly told Lee that the vest that he was wearing right now was not real. That bomb-like box in his vest was just a lump of clay. Lee was about to get angry but seeing everyone who was watching them through the broadcast that thought the bomb was a real deal, Lee told Kyle to stick to the plan and act like it was a real bomb. On the other side of the road, Patty and her crew were also following the two of them. Due to traffic jams, Patty then ordered Ron to deliver a microphone so he could talk while communicating with Lee. People seemed to start getting restless watching this hostage incident. Some of them were feeling sympathetic, some thought this was all but a setup, and some were happy to see Lee taken as a hostage because they felt what Kyle felt. They hated the TV stations that often lied to them. The people even asked Kyle to blow up the bomb to make the show even more exciting. Seeing the crowd, Kyle panicked until when Ron approached him, his reflex shot Ron in the arm. Everyone was shocked but Lee told him to keep going. In the TV crew van, after a long search for information, one of the crew discovered shocking information that some time ago, Walt had bought a mine in Africa using the stock money from investors, but the mine was forced to close due to protests from local Africans. Inside the federal building, Walt witnessed the news about Lee and Kyle who were on their way to his place. Walt realized that Diane had betrayed him by informing his whereabouts. He hurriedly left the building. But when he came out, Lee successfully captured him. Lee then showed all the evidence of Walt's fraud that Diane had found, starting with a purchase of a mine in Africa. To the photo showing him bribing. Seeing all the evidence, Walt still didn't want to admit the crime he had done. Kyle got annoyed and then ordered Lee to put his bomb vest on Walt and threatened him to admit his crime or he will detonate the bomb. Kyle's threat was a success. Walt finally admitted all his crimes. Hearing Walt's confession, Kyle felt so relieved that all his effort was not in vain. He managed to prove the fraud of the Ibis company. He then asked Walt to apologize publicly to all scammed investors but Walt refused. He instead said that it was Kyle's fault to invest in his company. Hearing that, Kyle's anger exploded. Kyle, don't. Oh, fuck, don't. Just, just call an ambulance. An ambulance. Kyle died right in front of Lee's eyes. The news of the death was spread all over America. Hearing all that news made Lee heartbroken. For him, Kyle was not a criminal. He was a person that man up when everyone kept silent. He was ashamed of himself. 
All he had done on live TV was mostly a lie. He finally realized the camera in front of him all this time was not just an ordinary lens but the eyes of the people who watched his news. With deep moral responsibility, Lee decided to stop being a TV news anchor.